in the article of Machsa, it has Purushim on, you know, Shem on nearly all of the, of, the, of, the, of the songs in there, all the Piyotin, uh, all of the Zemiris, or the Yitzris, whatever's in there, it's, 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 it's all spoken about and discussed broadly in the Art Scroll Machsa. Very nice. Now, there's a, 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 a Piyot from Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah called Onasane Taikif. Onasane Taikif, now I'm a big music fan, obviously, and uh, I grew up listening to the music of Leonard Cohen, Oliver Shalom, and uh, I realized when we were seeing Onasane Taikif, I realized that it was actually a Leonard Cohen song, a song called Who By Fire. I was reading the words and I was like, whoa, wow, Leonard Cohen writes a period. That's amazing. <laughs> and then I hopped. I was like, no, no, there was once a Yom Kippur where he was sitting in shul and he was just reading through the maxim. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. On the Sani Taikif. Wow. Discussing Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Yom Hadin. Discussing what happens in the base of Din Shulmaila, that every living thing is taken into account and counted and valued. That every living thing will be judged for life or chas v'shalom, the opposite. Who will live, who will die, how people are going to die, you know, it goes into great gory detail, you know. Chemex, Rafa, Skila, all the good stuff. It's all in there. And it's, you know, it's just a, what an amazing, amazing piece of uh, liturgy. It just blew my mind. And I started reading about Nasani Tokif and its, and its, its author. It was a man called Reb Amnon of Mainz. Amnon Memainz was a, uh, one of the early Ashkenazi Rabbanim. We don't know much about him. We know he lived in the middle between the years 1000 and 1100, somewhere around there. And we know that he wrote on Asani Tokif. But I don't know much else. And there may be a few other liturgical songs, Piyotin, that are attributed to him. So I was reading the story of Amnon, and uh, gosh, a little bit heavy and a little bit gory. Amnon made friends with a local a bishop, and this local bishop gave him an ultimatum. He said, Amnon, convert to Christianity or I'm going to kill you. So Amnon famously asked, reflecting the, uh, sorry, Haruga Malchus, for three days. He asked for three days to think about it, to see what he should do. And after three days, he came to the bishop and he said to the bishop, I'm sorry, I'm a Jew. I'm a Jew. I'm not going to be anything else other than a Jew. Even if I take on your narish kite, I'm still going to be a Jew. And I have to live as a Jew. And if I can't live as a Jew, then I have to die as one. I went to my rabbi, I went to Rabbi David, Rabbi David Tugentaft, Shlita, and I said to him, Rabbi, I don't get it. I don't get it. I know this whole Schar Ba'inish thing, and I know the whole Ziyat HaDashamaya thing, whatever, but, Rabbi, I've lost everything. Everything I have, like, you know, three months ago, two months ago, the world was, you know, at my feet. And the future was amazing, and now I have nothing left. I have no money. I have no job. I have no means of paying my musicians. I have no means of supporting, like, touring into the future. And I don't get it. I became Shema Torah and mitzvahs. I became Shema Shabbos. I did everything I could to grow as an individual, to have Kirva Selukim, to really feel close to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. You know, that's all I really wanted. And it has backfired in the most spectacular way. So, uh, my Rav, he was incredible at Chizuk. He's an amazing person. And he said, he said, wow, Alex, he says, don't you feel a shtickle Avraham Avinu? A shtick Avraham Avinu. It's like young Balchuva, like more, a little bit like Avraham Avinu. It's like, tell me more, Rabbi. And he said, um, he says, you know, Avraham Avinu, lived in a time where people didn't understand what Kedusha was. People had no concept of Elokus. They'd been so wrapped up in their own lives, in their own Narishkaits, pursuing things made of wood and stone, that they forgot about the actors of Hashem. People had no idea that Hashem existed. And Abraham Avinu, by process of, you know, logic, he understood that HaKadosh Baruch Hu was a thing. Not only that, but this thing, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Hashem, he was so benevolent and so kind that ultimately everything HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted to do in the world was from chesed, was from kindness. And Abraham Avinu decided to personify that, to teach the world that there is an Eibishter. And that this Eibishter is Goyim Lechassadim Toivim at all times.